Hey guys, it's Anthony with The Rag Company, and in today's video, we are covering the very general and very broad topic of claying your vehicle. Now, if you're not new to detailing, then I'm sure you know exactly what claying a vehicle is all about. But if you're new or you just wanna learn something new, then stick around because I think this video might be helpful. Now, we're gonna be highlighting two different products in today's video, which is gonna be the Rag Company's Ultra Clay Towel, as well as the Rag Company Ultra Clay Bar. These are two of our clay products that we like to use and we think work pretty damn well. Uh, however, this is gonna be a pretty general topic. So if you have another clay bar, maybe maybe a different type of clay product, this would also apply to that as well. So what is contamination and why do you need to clay your vehicle? Well, quite simply, contamination happens whether the car is driving and or sitting. Now, when particles from the environment, whether it's fallout from brake dust, whether it's uh, really fine dirt, whether it's tree sap, or whether it's uh, bug guts, things like that can all contaminate a vehicle surfaces. Now, when a vehicle sits in the sun and then it cools off and then it sits in the sun and then it cools off or it just fluctuates through temperatures, that paint is expanding and contracting constantly, right? So whatever type of contamination you have on your surface will expand and contract, expand and contract, kind of embedding that level of soil or dirt or whatever it may be deeper into the pores of your paint. Uh, that way you can't really see this contamination for the most part and that's why contamination is often more so felt than seen. Uh, in front of me is Optimum No Rinse Diluted 128 to 1, which is going to be the clay lube dilution for Optimum No Rinse. And uh, this is a highly dilutable product. This is extremely inexpensive, and I'm able to create this for literally cents. It, it, it costs almost nothing to create uh, this clay lubrication formula, which is just O&R and a combination of water. Now, next to that is we have uh, the Koch Chemies Clay Spray. I freaking love that name. Why has there been no other product called Clay Spray until now? I have no idea, but it works. So clay spray is going to be very high lubrication formula, a ton of lubrication uh, within this spray. And you can also use this for adjacent steps. So if you wanted to clay your car with this product, then go into polishing or uh, go into coating, you can as well. And last but not least is going to be PNS paint gloss. Now, what I like about paint gloss is that it's a very simple and easy uh, detailing spray. That's pretty much what it is. It's a detailing spray, a little bit of wax in it, so it offers lubrication, but this is also gonna leave a little bit of protection behind. So typically out of a detail spray, you'll get a couple weeks of protection, but not longer than that. So this, again, is going to just offer more lubrication uh, and then leave everything uh, as far as protection underneath it intact. I know I keep saying lubrication a lot. Are you taking a shot every time I say lubrication? Are you taking a shot for the lubrication of the lubrication of the lubrication of the lubrication? Well, now that you're wasted, let's move on to the next step. All right, so today's subject is going to be Sebastian behind the camera, uh, his Volvo here. Now, here on this rear quarter panel here, I can feel the contamination with my bare hand. You can probably even hear it. I can feel the contamination, right? And I can also hear the contamination. But if you're new to detailing and you can't really feel or hear the difference between a contaminated car and a non-contaminated car, uh, then a little baggie helps. So you can take a Ziploc bag. This is some type of mitten contraption uh, that I took out of Levi's desk. I'm not really sure what this is for. It kind of is freaking me out a little bit, uh, but I'm just gonna use it, right? So taking this and taking this across the paint, I can feel tree sap. See that? To me, that feels like tree sap, and that makes sense because, Sebastian, do you park this thing under a tree? Every day. Every day he parks this under a tree, so that makes sense that there is tree sap on here. So this right here is the Rag Company's Ultra Clay Bar. Now, is this the best clay in the world? Probably not. Is it the worst clay in the world? Definitely not. This is a good clay. We wanted to have a good clay that does the job, uh, that is affordable, that people can buy without spending an arm and a leg, uh, but something that is easily moldable and something that is a fine grade. We always try to go for fine grade clay because we find that more of the abrasives clays uh, do a little bit more damage than what you would normally want. And especially when a lot of our customers and consumers are, uh, let's just say beginners, right? And they want to try to get into this their first time. Uh, we want to make something that they can't really do a whole lot of damage with. And that's why we chose to go with a fine grade clay. Uh, now you get the whole bar. This is a 200 gram bar that you get inside this package. Uh, it's quite a bit. Could I take this whole bar to this paint? Absolutely. Am I going to do that? No, because that's completely overkill. Instead, I'm going to rip off about, I'm going to call it about a third. Now, if the clay is sitting out in the cold, if you have a cold garage, right, and this sits out there, this is going to become pretty hard. So what you want to do is take a little bowl of water, uh, preferably like warm water, dunk the clay in the water. It's not going to hurt it. Let it sit for a little bit. And after you pull it out, it'll be very, very easy to mold. And so this has been already warmed up here in our warehouse. So I'm going to try to make 
gonna go for like a disc. Sometimes I go for like a star shaped pattern. Sometimes I go for, I don't know, get creative. It's just like Play-Doh. It's like adult Play-Doh. I said it looks like a disc. Look, <laughs> I thought you said something else. Okay, so for this, we're gonna use O&R. O&R is pretty cheap. So, uh, and I can use a ton of it. Now, when I'm playing with O&R, there, there's really no such thing as too much. I like to just go to town. Uh, some people like to use soap as their clay lubricant, and you can do that. However, when you're using soap as a clay lubricant, you are working against time because you want to avoid soap staining, right? So if you're outside and you're washing your car and you get it re-soaped, you get it refoamed, and you go to start clay barring, you have to work fast because that soap is going to start drying. Hell, even in an indoor environment, that soap can start drying. So um, unless you have multiple hands or unless you can work extremely, extremely fast, then soap isn't ideal for me. And I just think that personally, O&R is something that can sit on the surface, dry on the surface, and wipe away clean every single time. So what I like to do, turn this on a fine mist setting. That is like, that is like the, the, the breath of a dragon right there. That is majestic. I love that. So what we're gonna do, and it smells good. So I'm going to start getting my clay lubricant on here. Like I said, there's no such thing as adding too much. So right now my whole entire surface is covered. Now before we jump in, a couple things I wanna do. I'm gonna spray my clay bar. It's a brand new clay bar. You guys just saw me pull this out of the packaging. I am going to break this in on glass. That's just my preference. Um, and this way, you avoid the clay grabbing. Because what will happen sometimes, right, if you don't have enough lubrication, you're gonna start claying, and that bar is gonna come to a halt. And you're gonna be like, oh my God, what just happened, right? Don't worry, not gonna cause any problems. It just means that the clay has stuck to a surface, and you might have a little bit of clay residue left behind. It's not a big deal. Um, from there, start up top here, more spray and I am going to begin claying. Now, if you want to go side to side, go side to side. If you want to go up and down, go up and down. It's kind of personal preference. What I like to do, keep it going, man. Just, like I said, more lubrication is not a bad thing. And then after I'm done, I come back through with a towel, set your clay bar on the opposite face of where you uh, were just using it, so that way your surface doesn't get contaminated. And then you're gonna take your towel, and we're gonna come back through start cleaning up some of this residue. All right, so now it's time for clay spray by Kosh Kemi. Like I said, this is a high lubrication formula, so you don't need as much as I was using of the O&R by any means. So for this, one spray, one spray into my clay. This stuff is freaking slick. This stuff is extremely slick. And so that one spray goes far. So realistically, that one spray, that would do this whole portion, this whole top portion of this quarter panel. So after that, you're gonna take your cleanup towel. You can use something like this, like, which is like a Drago. You can use something like a, uh, like, a, like a twist loop towel. I find that twist loops are probably my favorite thing to use. I just didn't grab one for today's video. That feels fantastic, that really does. Uh, but just for posterity sakes, I'm gonna show you the last clay lubricant here. So um, that's gonna be Paint Gloss by PNS. Very cost efficient. This is probably, um, I wouldn't say as cost efficient as O&R. This would probably be the, uh, the second cheapest option. So if we were gonna go with the cheapest, it would be O&R, uh, Paint Gloss, and then jumping up to Coach Kemi's Clay Spray. So um, again, this is gonna be something that leaves behind some wax protection. There is a small amount of wax within this detailing spray. Uh, so it's going to add some gloss, and it's also going to add some slickness as well. So uh, this is probably gonna be feeling much slicker than it already is, which is pretty cool. So um, for this, a couple sprays into my clay. And because this is cost efficient, several sprays here on the panel. Then from there, taking this and going through and claying. Yeah, man, this is, this is slick stuff. It smells really good. I don't know what the smell is. If you can ever figure out what the smell of paint gloss is, please let me know. I told PNS not to tell me because I want to keep guessing, but I keep guessing wrong. That's paint gloss, and taking our towel here, coming back through, wiping up our residue. Now, one thing I wanna note, this car is already pretty swirled, to be honest. Like I said, it needs to be polished eventually. 
um, but I'm not seeing any type of uh, marring being induced in, anymore by the clay. So that clay is not induced any more marring. Um, yes, it does have swirls, but typically I can spot the difference between a mar from a clay bar uh, versus just a very light surface swirl. And this, man, this feels good. I've clayed it three times, so it's of course gonna feel good, but it, it really, really does. That feels awesome. So um, what I'm gonna do, quick little clay uh, baggy test here. That feels literally 100% better, seriously. So we've knocked out the clay bar with the three different types of clay lubricants. Um, hopefully that was helpful visually. Uh, now we're gonna move on to the clay towel and show you the different clay lubricants with the clay towel. All right guys, so now it's time to move on to the clay towel. Now this isn't anything new. We've had the clay towel for uh, almost a half a year now uh, and people love this thing. Um, this right here, this clay, clay towel has gone through about uh, 60 uses. Seriously, this thing lasts forever. I tell people when it comes to buying a clay towel versus a clay bar, the clay bar is good for maybe three to five uses in total with that whole 100, 200 gram bar. Whereas this clay towel, hundreds of uses. Seriously, it, it just keeps going and going and going. Uh, and this one is uh, cleanable, whereas the clay bar, not so cleanable. So it kind of is up to you. You can spend a little bit less, go with the clay bar, use it a couple times if you're an enthusiast. If you're a professional or somebody uh, that's always detailing, then the clay towel makes a little bit more sense in my opinion. Uh, now, what I wanted to mention before is that when I was breaking in that clay bar on the glass, I was using pressure. But when I moved it to the paint, I was using uh, little to no pressure. So the idea is pressure here, little to no pressure when you actually get to the paint. Uh, and just for reference, a clay towel also needs to be broken in on glass. So taking my O&R here, spraying this down, I'm going to load, I'm gonna load this towel up with O&R as well. And I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna pretend this is a brand new towel and I'm breaking it in for the first time. Applying pressure, if you want, you can flip it to the other side. There is four sides of this clay towel that you can use. Apply pressure, apply pressure, and that feels good. That feels pretty good to me. So now for the paint, same concept. We're gonna go a little bit lower here. Apply a ton of product, apply it to our towel, and start working it in. Clay towel, I just like going back and forth. That's just my preference. So as I'm going, I'm spraying. That's it. Coming back through, we're gonna clean up all this clay lube. Taking my hand here, that feels pretty good. I would say that in terms of aggressiveness, the clay towel is not gonna be as aggressive uh, as the clay bar. The clay bar has a little bit more bite to it, and I think that's just because you're getting a little bit more pressure behind it, uh, whereas on the clay towel, it kinda disperses those pressure points, so you're not digging as much. So moving on now, Coach Kemi clay spray. Same concept, guys. Spray it on my towel, one spray, one spray there. And it's just the gift that keeps on giving. I'm spreading it all the way out. That one spray, I'm able to spread that from here to here with one spray and it just keeps going. Pretty wild, pretty wild indeed. Come back through, clean that up. Do a quick little feel. Oh yeah, that got it. That's everything. That is perfectly smooth. Last but not least, paint gloss by PNS. Ooh, I almost knocked that down. So for this, doing a couple sprays into the towel, and then I'm just gonna knock out this whole quarter here with paint gloss. Down. For somebody that's just wanting to offer a clay service, I don't think you'd beat this combination, seriously. Um, for adding a little bit of shine, a little bit of protection, um, and then just making a very, very, very smooth feel. If I was running a shop, or if I was running a mobile unit or anything like that, I would say this would be my clay bar package, right? I'd do my wash, and then I would simply do this with the clay and call that my wash and clay package.
Yeah, that's it. That feels good, man. That's what happens when you clay a, a vehicle three times in a row. It just feels insane. You hear that? You don't, because that's what I want to, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear and feel this. What does that mean? That means, Anthony, um, it's time to move on to polishing, or it's time to call it good, right? So if this is a wash in clay with like paint gloss, like I just said, customer's gonna enjoy this. They say, that looks good, that feels good. Um, didn't add any marring, didn't add any more scratches or anything like that. They're gonna be stoked. They're gonna be really happy. Um, but for me, I'm one of those guys where I only clay if I'm gonna polish afterwards. That's just me. So um, after I'd finish this, I'd move on to my polishing portion. So if you're worried about any of the type of um, uh, the, the product left behind on the surface, another thing you can do is take a little bit of a paint prep or an isopropyl alcohol and remove that before jumping into polishing. Because some people get really hung up by, well, there's polymers left behind or there's this left behind or whatever it is. Yes, guys, there's a little bit of stuff left behind, but that is meant to work with polishing. It's not going to affect that at all whatsoever. If you think that that, uh, that abrasive from that compound or that pad isn't going to break through whatever's on that surface in a matter of seconds, seconds, you're wrong. It's literally going to be done. So from there, jump into polishing, finish it out, add your favorite sealant, wax, ceramic coating, and call it a day. So anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Uh, those are two different types of clay materials that we sell here at the Rag Company, as well as three different types of clay lubricants. So I hope this video was helpful and or entertaining and educational and the there's one thing I wanted to add. Well, what is it, Dane? It's something we can literally clip in. We don't have to do anything else. Now, some of you smarty pants out there might recognize this towel and say, guys, isn't that the Optimum Ultra Clay Towel? You are correct. Yes. Optimum uh, chose to no longer carry this towel in their lineup. They said that this was just nothing uh, that they wanted to continue with, right? They had it for a while, uh, and then when we found out they weren't going to carry anymore, we said, hey, we want that towel in that color. Can we do that? And they said, absolutely. So we turned the Optimum Ultra Clay Towel into the Rag Company Ultra Clay Towel. So it's the same clay towel. We made a couple different tweaks. We made it bigger. It is now a nice 12 by 12 versus the old 10 by 10. Um, we also changed uh, the clay color just ever so slightly and made it a little bit of a lighter, more vibrant blue. And um, other than that, it is the same towel. And yes, they both work freaking fantastic. That Optimum Ultra Clay Towel still sits in my garage and I've used it uh, probably a hundred-ish times at this point and it's still going. It's insane. Uh, there's no point in me uh, jumping up to the Rag Company Clay Towel until I've killed that one and I just can't seem to kill it. So yes, they are the same towel, but trust me, they have that same level of quality and they're still the towel that you guys know and love. Okay, one other thing I just thought of. Oh, Dane. This is the biggest thing with clay. All right, so you've stuck around for the bonus round. Congratulations, because you guys are going to see something that you shouldn't do. Oh my god. Oh my god, I just dropped both of my clay products. Are they ruined? Well, let's find out. Reaching down here, drop my clay towel. Visually, it looks absolutely fine. Honestly, I can't see anything that this picked up. Yes, my floors are relatively clean here, but I'm not seeing anything. Just some surface staining from all of the uh, 60 uses that it has. Now, my clay bar, did it pick up anything? Yes, it did pick up some things. A little bit of grit right there. A little bit of something right there. Now, is this bar ruined? It's up to you. I would say that if you ever drop a clay bar, especially in a dirty environment, I would say it's up to you. If you feel like you shouldn't put that back on your car, don't put that back on your car. It's not worth it, right? For me, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I don't think this is that bad. I'm going to remold this clay to the best of my ability and I'm going to see what happens, right? If I take this to an area and I see some marring being left behind from that piece that just fell on the ground, I'm done. I'm tossing it, I'm picking up a different piece. Um, some people are risk takers and some people aren't, right? I've seen some people in shops that have clay bars that are haunting, literally haunting. I say, you don't continue to put that on a car, do you? And they say, yeah, it's totally fine. And I see them use it on a car and they're right. It was totally fine. Now for me, I'm like, that's crazy. I would never do that, but that's me. 
That's, that, that's my personal preference. There's plenty of people out there that use clay bars far beyond what they should be being used at. Um, but check this out. Remolded it. That looks pretty good to me. Dane, what do you think? That looks Honestly, pretty good. it looks like new clay. Yeah. Looks pretty good. That was two drops on the ground. This clay towel right here, um, what I would probably do is do a rinse. I basically spray a little bit of power clean on it, take it under the sink, rinse it out from the backside, rinse it out from the front, kind of wring it out a little bit, let it hang dry, and then pick it up a little bit later. So bonus round, guys. Enjoy. That's what happens when you drop a clay towel or a clay bar, such as 